A smooth operating mountain bike is an absolute pleasure to ride, but due to the conditions we ride in as mountain bikers, it doesn't always happen that way. And you can end up with a bike that creaks and groans all over the place, which as I'm sure you probably know, can be infuriating. So creaks and groans tend to happen in one of two ways. Something's worked its way loose, or there tends to be some grit or some sort of movement in somewhere that enables that creak or groan to appear. Now, they're not always that easy to find. You tend to think they're gonna be things like the pedals and that, but they can be sneaky other parts of the bike. So this is our Creaks and Groans 101, and we're gonna help you find out where those creaks are and how to solve them. First things first, you need to identify whereabouts that creak is coming from. And of course, some places on the bike can be confusing. So we're gonna break this down into a few sections. So firstly, does it happen when you're seated? If it creaks when you're seated, but it doesn't when you're out of the seat, chances are it's something to do with the saddle rails, the saddle itself, your seat post, or the clamp where it holds it into the frame. So if that's the case, that's an easy one, and we'll walk you through how to remedy those. Does it happen when you're stood up? If that's the case, then you've got to break it down into a few things. Does it happen somewhere around the transmission? Does it happen somewhere near the front of the bike? Does it happen under braking? Does it happen under acceleration, like torque? So all of these things are gonna direct you to certain places on the bike. If it's happening when you're pedaling, you've gotta work out if it's constantly when you're pedaling, in which case it's gonna be something like the pedals or the cranks, or if it happens under torque, where it could be anything. It could be the rear derailleur itself, it could be where the cranks are mounted onto the frame, it could be the bottom bracket. If it happens from the front of the bike when you're pedaling and you're out of the saddle, this could be related to your handlebars because handlebars can creak if they're loose when they're mounted into the stem itself. Even the tiniest fraction of movement there is enough to develop a creak and let some grime and grit to get in there and enable things to move in the future. So we're gonna show you that as well. And the other one to factor in is, does it happen when you're braking? Because braking forces going through the brake calipers, the brake mounts, the disc rotors, they can all in turn develop slight movements which can turn into creaking. So first up, we can look at the cockpit and your contact points on the top part of the bike. So that is your saddle, your seat post, your seat clamp, your handlebars, your stem, the steerer tube that it's attached to. So first ones first, let's take a look at the handlebars and stem. So this is one of the most important interfaces on the bike because obviously it has to cope with your steering, but your entire body weight goes through this when you're aggressively steering and you're riding out of the saddle. So any tiny bit of movement there will certainly develop a creak. And that creak almost always develops on the clamp that cradles the handlebars into the stem. And the reason for that is you've got these big, wide, strong handlebars and you've got a little leverage going through that tiny little clamp. So what you need to do first is have a look at the bolts, remove those bolts, take the stem clamp off, give the bolts a complete clean as well and a little bit of new grease on there. For the inside of the stem clamp, if you're using a carbon bar or you have been suffering from sort of movement, I'd recommend using a carbon assembly compound. Now that is essentially grease with particles floating in it that help adhesion basically it helps the grip of the bar within the stem and it ensures that when you tighten those bolts up to the correct torque setting there can't be any movement and it really secures the system next up remove the bolts that hold the stem to the steerer tube remove the stem from there make sure that interface is clean and again replace that put some fresh grease back on those bolts and secure all those bolts to the correct torque setting. On many modern stems, the torque settings are written on the actual stem itself, but it's an easy one to just confirm that by looking at the manufacturer's website. They do tend to be around four or five newton meters, but double check that just to make sure. And then if you have a torque wrench or access to one, it is the best way to do this because you get an accurate measurement of how tight those bolts are supposed to be. If you don't have access to a torque wrench, then you're just gonna to have to do this by hand, but of course you don't wanna over tighten those bolts. Over tightening the bolts can damage the handlebars by squashing them. It can also snap the heads off the bolts. So there's a very fine line there. The other main thing at the front of the bike here, of course, is the headset. So this is the bearing that the fork spins in, handlebars clamp onto that via the handlebar stem. Now again, there's a lot of force that goes through this. So if it's dry, if it's gritty, if it's even slightly loose, all of these can affect it. So it's very easy to just take your stem off, have a look, inspect the bearings inside, put some fresh grease in there if necessary, and also just take a look at the crown race on the steerer tube, because that can work loose from time to time, 
and quite often these days they involve using a split ring and that can move again the tiniest amount of movement that can develop into a creak so give that a good clean put a little bit of grease on there and get it back up into the steerer tube and adjust your headset as necessary back over to the saddle and seat post area of the bike make sure that you check the actual clamp and collar and of course the bolt that's in there as well because due to the amount of load that goes through that part of the bike again the tiniest amount of flex can make a big difference and of course lead to a creak so double check those and then go up to the clamp that holds on the saddle rails of the bike i recommend taking that apart completely take both of those bolts out take the clamp apart clean everything this is an area of the bike that easily creaks when it's dusty gritty wet mucky any of those things and whilst you're at it just check your saddle rails are in good condition and then they're probably stuck into the body of the saddle i've heard saddle rails creak before where they've been loose in the actual body of the saddle and seen people go mad trying to discover what that creak is you know adjusting every single bolt in the area and they still have the creak so sometimes it can just be the saddle in which case you perhaps might be able to stop it with some resin or some super glue or something but if the saddle rails are creaking within the saddle they're loose and at some point that's going to fail so probably time for a new saddle and just to be doubly sure if your saddle does have any sort of exotic rails on there like carbon fiber rails make sure that you don't over torque those bolts because you're in danger of crushing them the wheels of your bike have to deal with a terrific amount of load and a real amount of abuse from all sorts of different factors from braking from acceleration from just general abuse from hitting the ground so there's a lot of things you need to check here so first up when you remove the wheels from the frame just check the wheel axles themselves depending if your bike has an, a max or like a quick release style axle system or a dedicated axle make sure that device is nice and clean if it has got the lever on there check the cam make sure the cam is lubricated and works correctly make sure it's adjusted properly as well when you do reinstall that and more importantly check the axles themselves if the axles are dry in any kind of way or corroded then they can creak within the hub shell itself so make sure that they're clean put a tiny bit of grease on just to help them slide into place you don't need to put too much on because it's just going to draw excess dirt and grime which of course can lead to further creaking now due to the load that goes through the bike when you're braking hard that load has got to go somewhere and if there's any movement anywhere that can lead to creaking or further damage so you make sure that you want to sort of check these things out in the case of the wheels if you look at the front wheel it's a good example here there's a few factors here that can become a problem so the disc rotor itself the way it attaches to the hub is either going to be a six bolt system or it's going to be a center lock the six bolt systems don't really tend to give you any trouble but i would definitely check that all of those bolts are tight and if there are loose ones remove them put some fresh thread lock on there and secure them so they're nice and tight if you've got a center lock system they can work themselves loose without even realizing that they are loose so it's a good idea to remove those put a tiny bit of thread lock on the locking ring and secure that so it's nice and tight now the spokes in a wheel can create some havoc because they have to work under tension if there's any sort of movement if they rub together or if they're loose then they can create noise so firstly just check around the wheel make sure all of your spokes are nice and tight and there are no nipples loose there and provided that your wheels are securely tight and there's no sort of play or movement that needs addressing you want to look at the junction where the spokes themselves can rub now a pro mechanic told me fairly recently that in dry conditions especially spokes can creak just because of the fact that they rub together minutely under certain loads especially on a bigger wheel like a 29 so just think if you're cornering hard and those spokes can just rub together you can hear that as they sort of abrade against each other so one way to sort of help this is to make sure they're completely clean and use a bit of silicon lube but when you do do this make sure you put it on a rag and wipe it on do not spray it because there's a chance you might get it near your disc rotors and if that's the case you may as well bin them because that stuff you just can't get around it it's the slipperiest spray on the stuff you can get for a bike so if you've just got that silicon stuff and you wipe it just on the junction where the spokes can rub under pressure it can provide just a slight barrier just to help them stop gripping which would make them creak now what you don't want to use is something like an oil because that's going to attract further grime whereas the silicon spray is less likely to so that's a really cool sort of pro tip from a mechanic i had recently if you're lucky enough to have a full suspension frame you'll know that there are obviously a number of pivots and bolts on that bike frame that can lead to creaking if any of them come loose or if the bearings wear out 
So the first thing you want to do is just check all of those, but you can do that as you're running around checking the rest of the bike. So I'm just going to run you through the processes for top to bottom, front to back. And as you're doing that, make sure you check any relevant parts of your bike, because of course all suspension frames are different. I recently changed the bearings on it, so I know that they're not going to be a problem for me. But if your bike has been ridden for some time, you definitely want to just check those and make sure there's no play. And a good way to do that is by taking the shock out of the frame and just cycling the rear end through the travel and give it a bit of movement. You'll certainly be able to feel if there are any issues there. So the pedals, the bottom bracket, the front chain ring, all of that stuff down there, that takes all of your load and weight through the bike. So if any of that's loose, it is certainly going to creak there. It's one of the most obvious parts of the bike to check. So make sure you check the pedals themselves, see if they've got any play, see if they're tight, see if they're loose, see if they creak. You should be able to notice when you're riding if there's any clicking because you will feel it through the sole of your shoe. And you can also feel if they're binding at all. One other factor with pedals is if you have clipless pedals, of course there's a lot of mechanism going on there and there's a lot of movement that happens within that. Make sure it is free, make sure there's good movement in it, make sure it doesn't seize or anything, make sure it's lubricated, but also check the cleats themselves on the sole of your shoe. If those cleats are loose or they're old, they can creak, and you can actually think it's part of the bike that end up actually being the cleat on the sole of your shoe. If they are, take them off, clean them, put some fresh grease back in those bolts. You don't really want to use thread lock on those because it becomes really hard to take them off, but a tiny bit of grease is good just so they don't seize up. If it's the cranks, what you need to do is check the 8mm bolt that holds your cranks on. You want to check the interface where the cranks and the axles sort of mate. You also want to check the bottom bracket and you also need to check the spider where it attaches onto the crank or if your bike has got conventional chain rings, check each and every one of those chain ring bolts because all of these things can lead to creaking, especially chain ring bolts. They are notorious for it. Now your chain, it doesn't tend to creak at all. If there's a problem with those, they just snap. So you do just want to pay attention to that, make sure it's lubricated all the time. Of course, when it's running really dry, it can squeak, but that's not like a creak and groan that we're trying to find here. Just make sure your chain doesn't look like it has any damage to any of those links because when they break, the reason they break is the outer links come away from the pins and under the torque of your pedaling, that load can't be handled by one side and they pop open and snap. So you do not want that to happen when you're riding, it's not very nice. The rear derailleur itself, you want to check the jockey wheel bolts or the guide wheels. You want to check the actual guide wheels themselves don't have any play or if the bearings are knackered, in which case you want to definitely give them a bit of grease or if necessary replace the jockey wheels or the bearings in them. And finally, the actual hanger bolt is usually a 5mm or sometimes a Torx T25 that holds it onto the actual hanger. They are notorious for coming loose from time to time, especially on some older models of SRAM derailleur. They can just come loose when you're riding rough terrain and your gears will go slightly out of index, that's the sort of the telltale sign that's going to happen, or if your derailleur is creaking under hard load in the lower gears when you're climbing. The other thing you want to pay attention to is the hanger itself. Most hangers these days bolt onto the bike itself, whether that's to accommodate different styles of rear axles or if it's just to prevent crash damage and make it an easily replaceable part. Now they're quite often held onto the bike with tiny little countersunk Allen key bolts. If that's the case, remove those bolts, clean that interface and replace those bolts with some fresh thread lock. Because of course, just like the front of the bike, there's a lot of pressure and torque and twisting and stuff that goes through that back end of the bike. Again, if there's any movement and it's got somewhere to go, it's gonna result in a creak of some kind. Due to the transmission on a mountain bike and the way it works, that load is all handled at the rear hub where the cassette interface is with the hub. So there can be quite a lot of possibilities for movement and additional creak in there. So the obvious choice is to ensure that the cassette is tight. So the lock ring on the end that secures it to the free hub body is tight on there. But what you might want to do before doing that is remove it completely and see if the free hub body itself is secured on the hub and there's no movement or play in there because you can develop play quite easily and that will certainly lead to creaking. When reinstalling the cassette, make sure you give it a good clean all over. It's obviously a good time to do a deep clean on your drivetrain if you want to do that sort of thing. Make sure all the interfaces are nice and clean when you put it back on. And finally at the rear hub, the last thing to just check is make sure that that rear axle, just like the front one, You've checked it, it's not dry, it's not corroded, there's no sort of play if it's got a cam system. Check all of those things, give it a bit of TLC and a bit of lubrication if need be. Now the last bit of creaking that you're likely to find on a bike is a bit of an unusual one and can be hard to track down. And it can be when the cables or the ferrules creak within the cable guides themselves. 
It tends to be in very dry conditions this happens, but I've seen it many times over the years. So if your bike doesn't have end-to-end -end cable routing, check the cable guides on the frame where the cable ferrules just sit up against them. And if they are creaking, you can just spray a bit of lubricant in there. Generic spray lube is fine for this purpose. Give it a wipe clean afterwards and it should be fine. But if you do ride in dry conditions quite frequently, it might be an idea to use that silicon spray that I referred to earlier for the reason that it does allow it to sort of stop creaking but doesn't attract any sort of excessive amount of dust. So there you go, that is the places where all your creaks and groans are likely to sort of start from on your bike. Hopefully you've been able to use this to eliminate some creaks or will do in the future. And for a couple of other really useful videos, click down here to find out how a tyre is manufactured. There's a lot of crazy tech that goes into those things, a lot more than you might think. And if you want to find out 10 essential spares to keep alongside your toolkit, it's a really good basis for stuff to help fix your bike in the future, click just up there. As always, click on that globe to subscribe and share, tell all your friends about the channel. If you like this video and you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up.